Well, it is a little bit tougher climb, but we still expect, expect to be successful. It is the most expensive congressional race in the country. The attack ads litter the airwaves for months. Republican David Valadeo, the incumbent, began his current term with a vote to impeach former President Trump. Did that win him some bipartisan support in this district? As his challenger, Democrat Assemblyman Rudy Salas, launched a strong campaign in his first congressional bid. It was a midterm for the ages and, well, the record books on so many levels. So plenty to unpack with our panel this week. Let's take roll call. Current board member for High Speed Rail Authority, former Fresno County Supervisor and former Fresno City Councilman, also former Fresno Mayoral Candidate Henry Perea. Also political commentator and KMJ contributor Michael Germanuel Jr. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Happy post-election yes, now, right? Finally. So let's just let's start with races first, right? And I want to start with the new numbers as we just saw it here in the congressional race of 22. Rudy Salas, David Valadeo. As we look at the numbers here, Valadeo, pretty strong lead there as votes are now coming in. 42% are in. Um, is this a surprise or there's a lot to come yet? I think there's a lot to come yet, and I think this race will set a new national record for cost per vote. Mm -hmm. Something around $30 million, I heard, was spent, and it's going to happen every two years into perpetuity. It's going to be that kind of a battleground. Uh, but we've learned now that we have to wait until all the votes are counted, especially in this district. Mm -hmm. Valdeo is probably happy he has a lead now. But we know that can change depending on how the votes fall. You know, I saw some in Kern County where this race is also playing out 13% voter turnout. 13%. What yeah. do you make of that? And obviously the race. Yeah, that's just unbelievable that it would be that low. Mm -hmm. But in this race, I thought it would be a little bit closer. But would you look at the fact that this just Fresno County, about 30% turnout at this point, that, that's pretty dismal. No. And, of course, I, you know, I'd like to see at some point the breakdown of Democratic votes. I think the Democrats stayed home in, in some res mm -hmm. many respects. That's why Rudy's having a right now a hard time I think it's a count. good point, uh, Henry, because yeah. if you look at the statewide candidates and how they ran in Fresno County, the Republicans carried every statewide office in Fresno County by mm -hmm. large margins, yeah. which surprised me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was by 55, 45, 60 to 40 in some cases. It seemed like it was a more conservative electorate locally. Yep. Yeah, locally. Mm -hmm. um, let's get to Congressional District 13. This is a tight race as well that could also swing the power struggle in the House. John Duarte and Adam Gray. Uh, Henry, this is virtually a tie. Could we <laughs> yeah. see a recount here? I don't know about recount, but I think the same thing. I think Democrats turnout was just low, but mm -hmm. I think it's close enough to where I think I think it is going to be pulled off by Adam Gray. Really? Yeah, I do. You know, what's odd here is that, you know, Adam Gray got a lot of the endorsements from Republican law enforcement, including right. Sheriff Mims. Right. Is this a little surprising that John Duarte is doing this well? I'm not surprised. He's got a great story, a great ballot designation, farmer in the ag industry. We know that our ag industry is under a challenge with water and other issues mm -hmm. and so um, I think when you run someone with his credibility and long record in business of success they're gonna run strong and uh, although the district would tend to mm -hmm. be sort of a no-brainer for Democrats so right. I think it's a tribute to his campaign that he's run so strong. I'm gonna skip ahead here because I want to follow uh, another close race this is more statewide now California Assembly 27. This is Esmeralda Soria, Mark Pazin. This race, <laughs> very close. Yeah. Uh, the new numbers that came out Thursday had Soria ahead by uh, statewide 219 votes. Yeah. Uh, so a lot to be counted still. Um, virtually a dead tie here. Uh, Mark Pazin didn't do a lot of attack ads against Soria, but Soria did against Pazin. What do you make of this? Well, I, I'll go back to, the, I don't want to be a broken record here, but I think the damn state home. I mean, when you look at just voter registration, I mean, Soria should have been a lot higher than she is right now. Mm -hmm. But I think the votes that are going to be counted at the end, because there's a, still a lot of votes to be counted in both counties, I think a lot of those are going to trend her way. It's going to be a squeaker, though. Yeah, you know, this is, this, she, you know, she went for that congressional spot against Casa, didn't obviously come out of the primary two years ago. Right. Maybe she was setting herself up for this. She was waiting for redistricting, and here you go. She has a pretty good ground game. But it seems the Merced voters, the Madera County voters, are having a bigger say here. 
Well, I think that, I'll, you know, Mark Payson was a sheriff of Merced County. Yeah. I, I think in the Valley, law enforcement has a lot of respect still. Mm -hmm. And people are willing to look across party lines to see somebody with that ballot designation. And he did a nice job when he was sheriff. I knew Esmeralda Soria was in trouble when I saw her ads because they were brutal and they were mm -hmm. negative. Obviously, she was trying to move the numbers. It all d depends on who the election day voters were, right? Yeah. We, yeah. We, you yeah. know, we don't know who sh showed up on election day. Was it center right or center left? That's going to be. And if mm -hmm. young voters even came out, yeah, that yeah. would be interesting. I, I bet those numbers are going to be very low for yeah. young voters. Yeah. yeah. Well, California State Senate District 16, Melissa Hurtado, and, and we should mention that Rudy Salas and Melissa Hurtado, they both decided to skip out on a debate that I was involved with uh, down in Bakersfield. Um, they decided not to attend that debate after signing up for it. And now there is David Shepard, the first time mm -hmm. Republican candidate here, winning this race. Rudy Salas also losing his race. But is this the big shocker? Because Melissa Hurtado is virtually a centrist mm -hmm. when, when it comes. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of ag support. Uh, yeah. To me, if I were to pick a shocker locally, that would be the race. Yeah. You know, I thought she would have performed much better than what those numbers are showing right now. And again, we have to look, as Mike says, who were the voters that came out on election day? Maybe, maybe uh, we'll see a rise there. But she has a big hill to overcome there. Despite the fact that Shepard's got a margin, I don't think you can ever say that anything is over until all the votes are in, right? right. So, but I am really surprised that he ran this strong as a novice against mm -hmm. an incumbent legislator who has gotten a lot of high marks from both sides. Mm -hmm. So if he wins, I think it will be the local upset of the year. All right, we got a couple minutes left in this first panel segment. So big winners, big losers, and just your overall theme of it all. Uh, Measure E was the big loser. Yeah. Uh, there's no question. When you run a campaign on a million and a half dollar budget and you have no opposition and you get smoked like, like it got smoked, I think that's, that's a huge loss. On a national level? National level, the Republicans were the big losers. They were expected to do a lot better in the midterms mm -hmm. and they didn't. There's a lot of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But I think first and foremost is nobody really had a handle on what they were going to do if they became the majority. Yeah. Nobody really knew. So. Yeah. If, if, if you don't know what you're voting for, then you won't turn out for it. Yeah, I have to agree with Mike. Big what? loser local what, you, what is all this agreement <laughs> stuff going <laughs> well, on here? That's the, it's just what it is. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they... Um, Locally, what measure. was your big shocker? Um, I know you're involved in Measure C. Yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the yeah. measures a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. But. You know, even though I, I did not support uh, the, uh, the Fresno State uh, mm -hmm. initiative, I was shocked that it lost, uh, I mean, as Mike was saying, as much money as was spent on it and with really no organized opposition, mm -hmm. uh, that was a shocker to me. Well, I'll say this. Uh, as I look at the big picture here, to me, the big winner was Governor Newsom. He got Prop 1, he got Prop 30, both that he really campaigned for that over governor, right? Mm. Ron DeSantis, he turned Democrat counties in, into red counties. Miami-Dade, right? yeah. Right? And yeah. so my thought is... That's what we're going to see in 2024. Even though former President Trump has a big announcement on Tuesday <laughs> at Mar-a-Lago, is Trump a loser on the midterm? Well, I think he has to be considered part of the reason why the Republicans didn't do as well. He's being portrayed as the reason why. He's not, yeah. It's not the reason why, but it's part of it. But I think the other thing is, with Trump, you've got to give him an exit that will allow him to declare victory. Mm. And so even if he announces next week, I don't know if he will actually run. The announcement is, uh, is a tactic, yeah. but he's got a long time before he actually has to file and run. Real quick. Yeah, I, think, I think he does announce. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think we should be ready for him to announce as an independent, because I don't think mm -hmm. he can take a loss to a Ron DeSantis. And, uh, and I think he would lose against DeSantis, so He's got to save face somehow, and I think he runs independent. All right. This knowledge here is coming back very soon, so stick with <laughs> us here. All right, coming up.